Oh, hi. Um, we just finished this problem. We, uh, or at least we finished most of it. Um, there's only a couple things that would really change if we did this part B, where it's an 8 kilogram. Instead of 4 here, we would have an 8. So then this number would come out to be, like, um, it'd be like 78.6, and then this number would be different. All these numbers would turn out different, but really it's just a computational thing, so I'm not going to go through all that. But we, we had a bit of a challenge, because initially we had to use Pythagorean's theorem to actually find this other leg, and then we did rise over run to get the slope. We used inverse tangent to get the angle. We found out uh, how much of this gravitational weight is pulling the box down the ramp, and then we used that to figure out that um, if it weighs 4 kilograms, it must be accelerating at 1.95 meters per second per second. And then we just used our little uh, kinematics equation here, and we found out what the final velocity was, what, how fast it was going towards the end. Um, time for another uh, example. Um, let's see. I'm just going to copy the part A here on this one, because we never have time for a part B. Make this super big! Control V. Okay. A wooden box on it flies directly down an inclined plane, and the velocity is 6 meters per second. How large is the coefficient of kinetic friction if the plane makes an angle of 25 degrees with the horizontal? Um, nom 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 nom. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to, again, make one of these little triangle diagram things. Right? Uh, let's do that. Yay, straight. Haha, -ha, I beat you. And then, of course, it gets screwed up up back. Oh, well. I can never draw a perfect triangle and paint. I'll get over it. Okay, so we know that this angle is 25. Right, 5, 25. Okay, and then um, how large is the coefficient of kinetic friction? Well, first we want to find, before you find the coefficient of kinetic friction, you want to find the force of friction. That's always what you want to go for first, because that's an easy one to find when you're do working for a problem related to friction. Or relatively easy. Uh, and basically the steps are, uh, okay, coefficient of kinetic friction. To find that, you're going to look at where that appears. So UK, that's going to be equal to, well basically we know that that's the, the normal force times that is equal to the friction force, okay. So if we find the friction force and the normal force, then we can find the coefficient of, um, coefficient of friction. Uh, kin well, kinetic friction, but coefficient of friction. So what's actually kind of neat is that the frictional force uh, is basically, since it's equal and opposite the downward applied force, it's actually the same. And if you remember, when we, um, when we, I'm not even going to really draw in most of the math here, when we take this gravity, we find out how much of it's pulling down the ramp. That is this applied force. So that means that this is equal to the applied force. Or you could say that that's equal equal to our this sine of this angle right here. So that's uh, 25 degrees. So equals uh, times the weight. So we have the weight times the sine of 25. So the sine of 25 opposite over hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is the weight. So if you multiply that all times the weight, then you get that the sine times the weight is equal to the opposite. And the opposite is this right here. It's that applied force. And then the normal force, uh, the normal force Fn is going to be equal to, let me make this bigger, that's just going to be equal to W times cosine of 25, because that's the other side here, it's the adjacent side to this angle, right? And this is always a hypotenuse, that's W, that's the weight. Okay, so we can, uh, we're getting close to solving the problem almost, and we haven't really plugged any numbers in. How convenient is that? 
I'm not even going to plug any numbers in yet, because uh, I think you're actually going to kind of be interested to see this. This is something that's useful to know. It's kind of like what we discovered in the lab today. Um, so now, how do we solve for u in this equation? I know it's kind of sloppy, so I'm going to rewrite it. So we have um, that the normal force times u equals the applied force, right? Or equals the force of equals the force of friction, which is equal to the applied force. Okay, that's nice. Um, what com how can we solve for u? We can say that u is equal to the applied force divided by the, n the normal force, right? Make sense? Okay. Now, the nor the that means that we can say that u is equal to Okay, well, what's Fa? Fa, we said, was W times sine of 25. Sorry. W times sine of 25. Oh, actually, let's let's say that T is 25. So it could, I, it could really be any angle, right? Because no matter what angle this is, the sine and the cosine things hold true. So it's whatever the weight is times that sine divided by here, that normal force, that's this piece, so whatever the weight is, times cosine of that t. Right? Here, let me put brackets instead, they're prettier. Okay. So, well, we can see that uh, you kind of have the, uh, the w's canceling out, right? Because it's w divided by w. And now we get what? Now we get sine over cosine. What is that? Trig identity, people? Well, not even identity, but it's just like a definition. That's the tangent of that t. That's all it is. The coefficient of friction here, this u, is just equal to whoops, that tangent of the angle. So in this case, tangent of 25. That's a really, really neat num answer that we come up with, right? Because, I mean, instead of on the test going through and plugging in all these numbers, doing all these equations, you now know, and this is one that Mr. Roscoe doesn't teach you, Mrs. Dr. Martino doesn't teach you this, they don't mention this in Bo, so this is actually one thing that I'm glad I introduced in my video that the coefficient of friction is just the tangent of the angle. And it should make sense if you think about it. Because, um, regardless of how hard you're pushing on something, if you're pushing down on it as it's going down the ramp, uh, yeah, you're going to be increasing the friction, but you're also going to be increasing how much it's going down. And basically, it, it, regardless of how much, what, force, what the forces are, regardless of how fast it's going, the coefficient of friction is going to basically depend on the angle, if that makes sense. I'm not sure if it does, but basically... Uh, I hope that makes sense. But if not, it's just a, uh, I'd say, a kind of useful thing to, uh, to know or to remember. And this is the... Um, this is the coefficient of kinetic friction. I believe, do not quote me on this because I'm not sure at all, I believe this is also the same for um, the coefficient of, uh, what is it, static friction. Uh, but I, I'm not positive. I haven't really checked over it. And I'm not going to look through it here. But hopefully you learn something here. Not only how to go about solving it, um, like actually sol solving it all out, because you could have just plugged in numbers for the weight. Uh, the weight it would just be the... Um, actually, they don't even give you the weight here. Hmm. So that's interesting. No notice that they also give you... They tell you that it's sliding down an inclined plane at a constant velocity of 6 meters per second. That's a misleading thing that they'll do, because no matter what the constant velocity is, as long as it's not accelerating, that doesn't change any of the mass. Um, but notice, they don't even give you a mass. So maybe this was the answer that they were looking for here, 
Um, I'm getting this from a website. This is kind of a problem. Because you don't even have a mass, so you can't find out what this weight is. So the only way that you can really solve this problem is by doing it out like this. But most of the time they'll give you a mass or something, and then you can just plug the numbers in, figure out the weight is the mass times 9.8. You can use your calculator to find sine and cosine of t, multiply these things, and divide, and then you get your u. Or you can take the tangent of the angle. Done. I hope I helped. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Nah, I hope I helped. That's all I can really uh, say. I'm pretty sure this always holds true. And I mean, it should make sense because basically, um, if you have ever seen the graph of a tangent, it looks kind of like this. And that should make sense because, um, and it won't seem immediately obvious why, but here's why. If you have a really small angle, that that would fall somewhere right here. Remember, this is this is uh, say zero degrees from zero degrees to this is ninety degrees, right? That's the value of tangent, and this goes up towards infinity. Um, and remember, the coefficient of friction is kind of like um, how difficult and how easy it is for the, uh, or rather, it's uh, how easy it is for something to slide down it, right? So if you have a very small angle, well then the tangent would might be, say, down here somewhere. So that's going to be a small coefficient of friction, because it's not going to be easy for the box to just slide right down, because there's going to be a lot of uh, friction going on there. The gravity is not going to have a big impact. Whereas, uh, in contrast, if you have this, try this ramp, it's a death ramp. That would be somewhere up here. Oops. Crap. Say so there's your death ramp. Okay, well that means that this... Oh my god, go away. Go away, you stupid, stupid, crappy thing. Ah, uh, that's annoying. Ha. I beat you, kind of. Yes, I did it. Okay. So this is your death ramp. See, now this right here, this is a pretty large angle, right? So that's going to be somewhere up here. I mean, if this is your angle, right? From 0 to 90. That's going to be somewhere up here, and this is a large value of for the coefficient, right? So the coefficient of kinetic friction is going to be very high. It's going to be pretty high up there because it's going to be extremely easy for a block to slide down this ramp. That's basically where that comes from. Hopefully I helped you. Hopefully this will save you possibly uh, a lot of time on the test. Maybe, maybe not. Um, but I, th I think that's one really neat thing actually that appears in physics is that it's just it just turns out to be like that. I just think it's neat. Um, in the next video, I'm either going to do another example or I might do a little bit of trust analysis. I'm not sure. I'm going to uh, fill it out, see how all everything's going. Let me know how the videos are. Let me know if you're actually watching them, because I'm not sure whether or not people are watching them or not. And if they're not, then obviously I'm not going to continue. But if they, if if hell, if one person is benefiting, I'll keep doing it, doing it. But just let me know if anything's working, not working. Um, I hope I helped. Um, I'll make another video soon. So uh, I'll see you then.